Flushing a water heater the right way step by step. Now, flushing a water heater is something that you need to do and today I'm gonna show you how. If you're new to the channel or even if you're not, if you've been here before but you hadn't done it yet, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. And if you know anybody that has a water heater, make sure you share this video with them. It can help them out, make their water heater last longer and save them lots of money. So flushing a water heater the right way, why is it important? Well, first of all, as you get sediment buildup in the bottom of your water heater, it actually lowers the efficiency rating. So it's gonna cost you more money and you're gonna get less hot water. What happens is the sediment normally builds up in, in a gas water heater in the bottom of the tank, even in an electric, but it'll also build up on the elements and things like that. So flushing the water heater on a regular basis can really save you some problems. Now, if you've got a water heater that is say five or six years old, I probably wouldn't flush it at that point. If you have not started flushing it in the very beginning, you don't wanna start now because any microscopic cracks, anything like that, that may have got filled with the anode rod or may just be plugged up with sediment, if you start flushing it now, it could possibly make that happen. So what I want you to think about is number one, when did you have the water heater installed? And if you're not sure, you can always go down to the label, check the serial number, check the model number, and do a little bit of research. Find out what brand it is. This one is a Bradford White, and, and thanks to the people at Bradford White for giving me this with the cutout. I love showing people the inside of it. Like I said, if it's over three or four years old, I probably wouldn't flush it just because that sediment may actually be what's keeping it from leaking. Now make sure you hang around to the end because if you have a problem with your water heater draining, which you're gonna need it to do to flush, I'm gonna show you how to fix that problem too and it's a completely different deal. So first of all, what I recommend at this point is reaching up here and shutting off your cold water valve. Now, this is a trainer we've got here in our shop. As you see, doesn't hold any water. But normally on the cold water side, your water line comes up, goes back to the wall, and there's a valve there. Hopefully it is a full port ball valve, which means you grab that handle, you rotate it 90 degrees. If it's a gate valve, I would be very cautious as to closing it, but most plumbers aren't installing them anymore, so I really doubt you're gonna have that problem. If it's a gas water heater, go ahead and turn off the gas. You can either turn it off here at the control valve, which means you'll have to light it later, or turn it down to vacation if you don't wanna turn it off, if you're not sure how to light it. But anyway, I try to turn it down because I don't want it firing up while I'm flushing. Now, I'm one of these people, I don't completely drain the water heater. I like just flushing it with the city water pressure on, so we'll get to that in a minute. But after you've got the gas and the water shut down, now what you wanna do is you want to see if it's gonna drain. Now, once you've got the water off, you wanna make sure that there's nothing on anywhere in the house. What I'm gonna show you how to do is create a vapor lock to where you're just gonna find out, will the drain valve open? Now, one thing I like about this water heater, it has a metal drain valve. A lot of them have gone to the plastic ones because they're cheaper. I prefer a brass drain valve, but I'm gonna show you something that I do to it to also make it work a little bit different. All right, so after you've got the water and the gas off, you're gonna need a screwdriver. Or if you've got a plastic valve, you're just gonna rotate the handle. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come down here and you're gonna hook up a garden hose in a minute. But what I want you to do first is actually put a towel down here. Because what I want you to do is crack this open and see how water comes out. Now, you've got a vapor lock on it, so it shouldn't come pouring out as long as all the hot water faucets are shut through the house. Now, I want you to crack this open and see if this is gonna drain. If you've got water coming out, you're probably okay. Go ahead and close it back. Now, if you're not 100% sure, if it's just trickling out a little bit, go ahead and close it back anyway. Hook your garden hose up at this point. Now, what I wanna, want you to do Remember, this is a hose thread. So you're gonna hook your garden hose up, you're gonna run it outside to a safe area. Now, I like running it into a bucket so I can see what kind of sediment appears. I've actually even taken a, a white t-shirt, put it over a bucket, cut holes in the bottom, that way I could just flow the hose through it and see if I was getting any calcium, magnesium, any kind of stuff like that. That's actually the buildup that you're gonna get in here. So if you've cracked it open, you know it's gonna flow good, you're fine. At this point, go ahead and open your valve back up. You don't have a lot of pressure on it because we don't have the water on yet. So now at that point, you've got everything done. You want to turn on your cold water valve. So now that you've got your hose hooked up, you've got somebody watching it, everything's fine. You wanna reach up here and open your valve up. Now your water heater should sound like water is really flowing through it. 
Long as you hear that, everything's going good. What I would do at that point is go outside to the valve, watch it and see how good is it coming out. And look at your sediment. Are you actually getting sediment out of it? That's where I like running it through a t-shirt or something like that. That way I can just see what's there. But that's about all it takes really. It should take five or 10 minutes to get most of the sediment out. You can let it run longer, it's up to you. If you're still getting sediment, let it keep running. If you're not, come back in, shut your drain valve. You can leave the valve on up here, shut the drain valve, disconnect your hose and carry it out. But if it's not coming out fast or if it's not draining at all, now we're gonna get down here and I'm gonna show you what you can do next. Okay, so say you open the valve and it's not draining very well. One thing that I would do at that point is go ahead and close it. Close the valve, keep the towel under it, go ahead and disconnect your hose, get it out of the way. Now, most plumbers will use a piece of silver solder. Anything that they've got on their truck, we normally don't carry clothes hangers around. But what you're gonna do then is open this valve back up and stick your wire up in there to see if you can unclog anything. A lot of times, just poking around in here, you can break up enough sediment that you'll get it draining down. So you may wanna hold the towel up, you may wanna hold the rag up, that way if water does start coming up pretty good, you can kinda of cover it up and then reach up and just close it again. But sometimes doing this, just sticking that wire in there will break up any sediment that's down by the drain valve because that is actually the lowest point on the inside of the water heater. So anyway, that's a great thing to try. Now, if you can't get it in, if you can't get that to work, if you can't get it to drain, here's another option. Now this is one you wanna be a little careful with, but it's something you can do. Go get a three quarter inch brass nipple, about three or four inches long. They make a three quarter inch full port ball valve that has female threads on one end and male hose threads on the other. That's what I would love to have, and that's what I actually like to replace these with. The reason is that the full port ball valve is gonna make it drain faster. It's full size. Most of these openings in these little drain valves are about 3 eighths of an inch, so that's gonna hinder everything. It's gonna slow it down. So if I could not get it to unclog or it was still draining really slow, what I would do is close the valve again. Go ahead and get down here and loosen this up. Now, when you loosen it up, a little bit of water is gonna come out. Just be ready for it. Have your rag ready. If you've got your brass nipple and the valve, already have it put together. Teflon tape and pipe dope so you don't have any leaks. Start unscrewing this. And remember, keep your rag closed because when you pull this out, you're gonna get some water out of here. But as soon as you get this out, have the next one ready to go right back in there and then tighten it up. Now, one thing that you may do whenever you pull it out, if it's not draining very fast, again, go ahead and take this wire You've opened that up now, so you've got a little bit more room. Get in there and see what you can do to get it cleaned out. Then put everything back together. Now you wanna be very careful doing this because remember, this is hot water. If you're afraid that you're gonna to have to change this out, you may want to go ahead and open the valve up in there and go run the hot water for a while to help everything cool down. But once you get everything back in and put back together, check it out, make sure that there's not any leaks and this should take care of everything for you. Now, if you change your valve out, you're still gonna have to hook the hose up and run it. Open your cold water valve on the top to help it flush out really good, but that will help you flush this water heater out really, really well. So flushing a water heater the right way step-by-step step, can save you a lot of money. Here's why. Plumbers normally get 250 to $500 to come out, spend the time to flush this and do it right. They're gonna make good money, but as a homeowner, this is something that you can do. As a plumber, if this is something that you're not recommending to your customers, you really should be, especially when you sell them a new water heater, you should be coming back every year servicing that to make sure that they don't get build up. As a homeowner, here's why this is important. If you don't get a sediment build up in there, it's gonna make your water heater more efficient. It's gonna last you longer. You're gonna have more hot water for longer periods of time. If you're a homeowner and you flush your own water heater, do me a favor and leave me a comment down below and let me know what do you think about it. Do you do it the way I do? Do you do it any different? Some people tell you to turn the water off, disconnect it, and drain all the water out. I don't like doing that because of the thermal expansion of the tank. I think once the tank gets cold and then gets hot again, it shrinks, it gets big, I think you put too much stress on the tank and you can actually cause cracks that you don't wanna have leaking later. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber 
I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.